topics. Welcome to another video. So today, in the second part of the bioinformatics series, we are going to discuss a very, very important topic based on databases. Now, this is one favorite topic and there's a lot of it to remember. So I will upload all my notes on my Telegram group as well as on my Instagram page. So don't forget to follow me. Now, without much ado, let's get right into this video. Database is nothing but a computerized archive which is used to store and organize data in such a way that you can easily retrieve it, okay, and you can easily study it. A database is made up of two components that is, the computer hardware component and the software component, both together are actually used to manage the data. Now, when any experiment is conducted or any type of sequencing is done, you get a lot of data. How to make it accessible to people? by using a database. How to organize different data by using a database. So that is the purpose of the database. Now databases, depending upon how the information is achieved or how the data is procured is divided into three parts. That is primary databases, which actually collect raw data. They have raw data. Raw data means they are directly got from experiments and include very, very less annotation. The second one is a secondary database, wherein the data from the primary database is processed further, okay, to give you better information, more information about the model. Finally, you have some specialized databases that are dedicated to a particular purpose. May it be organism purpose, may it be genomic purpose, it can be experimental purpose. So it is specified for one particular type, and that is a specialized database. There is another branch in this, which is firstly not a branch, but we are going to study it. That is a commercial database. Most of these, what I'm going to discuss in the first part of the lecture, are all open access. Meaning anybody and everybody can access this data. But there are some commercial databases that are maintained by a particular company. So now let's look into the primary database. So the primary sequence databases are repositories for raw sequence data, which are freely accessible. There are three main databases, especially here we are talking about nucleic acid sequences or nucleotide sequences. So three databases for the nucleic acid collection, nucleic acid data collection are the GenBank, Nucleotide Sequence Database and DNA Data Bank of the past. So please make this clear in your head. There are three databases for this purpose. One is GenBank, that is by NCDI. The second one is Nucleotide Sequence Database, which is basically run and curated by ENBL, European Molecular Biology Laboratory, the full form of NCDI, National Center for Biotechnology Information, and DNA Data Bank of Japan, which is maintained by CSS. So the starting what I've written, GenBank, Nucleotide Sequence Database, and DNA Data Bank of Japan are the names of the databases and what is followed like NCTI EFA are those that actually look after the database. They are sequences, they curate it. Okay. Now, this is an example of one such database. Now, in these primary databases, you get information like the name of the protein, the size, the accession number, the keywords, if any, the organism source from which it was basically taken, the paper from which it, which it was taken, the title of the paper, the author of the paper, the PubMed number, references, all of these annotations are available in a primary database along with the sequence. Along with the primary database, we also have something called as a subsidiary database. A subsidiary database is that within one database, like for example, within the trend bank, we have certain further subsections. And these subsections are made for specific type of data. Like suppose you carry out the whole genome sequencing of E. coli or the whole genome sequencing of uh, the human. So you will get a nucleotide sequence. Now this nucleotide sequence suppose is in gen -time. But what is done is they have created again a subsection which will specifically have only the data that is obtained by the genomic sequencing. 
so that way you will have dbesp dbgss dbscs and h TG. So within the Gen Bank, you have these subsidiary databases. That is all the data regarding express sequence tags, which is you know required for experimental purposes. You will find under this subsidiary DBEST. For genomic survey sequences, you will find it under DBGSS. For sequence tag sites, you will find it under DBSCS. And for the high throughput genomic division. Or whatever studies are taking place by high throughput sequencing, you will get in this subsidiary. So that is a subsidiary sequence database. Now, knowing this, let us understand from where these databases actually come into these sites. We understood that for nucleic acid, we have these three main databases. But then how to submit a sequence to that database? That is what we are seeing now. So that is the topic of sequence submission. Suppose tomorrow you discovered a new organism and you sequence the DNA of that organism. Now you want it known to everybody. So how do you do that? So for submission, there are special softwares available. Now for EMBL and NCBI, you can submit the sequences via the World Wide Web. That is through the internet to the www domain, you can submit the sequences to EMBL and NCBI. To submit a sequence to EMBL, you have to use the web in tool. So web in is a tool where you can actually give the sequence and information, how you got it, etc. And for NCBI, it's the tool called Bankit. Okay, so the tool is called Bankit for NCBI and web in for EMBL. Now NCBI also has another tool called as Sequin, which does not need access to the internet. You can locally submit it to the sequin tool. And it can be used with any kind of operating system, let it be Windows, Unix, or Mac. Okay. So these are the ideas as to how to submit your sequence. Now for proteins, we have the centralized database that is PDD. Unlike your nucleic acid sequences, the major sequence for primary databases is the PDB database. The PDB database has all the atomic coordinates of macromolecules as well as both included proteins and nucleic acid which have been determined either by X-ray crystallography or NMR. So these data is stored in PDB, the exact structure of a protein, the exact information about the protein the code for the protein is all stored in PDB. It uses a flat file format to give the protein name, authors, experimental data, secondary structures, cofactors, atomic coordinates, etc. Okay, it is uh, the PDB actually gives you a tool where you can actually manipulate the structure, meaning you can move the structure. So if this is a structure, you can place your cursor over here and move it. You can go to the PDB website and try it for your own. Okay. So that is the primary sequence database. Another primary sequence database is the Swiss prot or the tree and the tree uh, tree embed. Okay, I'll tell you what this is. First, we'll try to understand what Swiss prot is. So Swiss prot is nothing but a collection of confirmed protein sequences. This is very, very important. Confirmed meaning when you have all the information available about the protein and, the, and you exactly know the structure of the protein, then you will find that protein in the Swiss prot database. So it is a collection of confirmed protein sequences along with the data on that particular protein. So annotations, that is information regarding the structure, the function, the protein family to which that particular protein belongs. It is maintained by the RCSB, that is Research Collaboratory for Structural Bioinformatics. And the sequence of the protein or the structure can be submitted through this particular tool that is called as Auto Depth Input Tool. So, like the previous sequin and all we discussed for NCBI for Swiss Proc, you can deposit it to ADI. What other features it gives you? It other, the other features given to you are the keywords, the information about the proteins, etc. Okay. There are also links to other secondary databases like ProSite, Print, and 
CFAM inside of the Swiss fraud. So further, if you want to study more about them or if you want more derived information about them, you can click on these links and it will lead you to the other side. Then about CREMDL. Now, what is CREMDL? So the TR actually stands for the translation. So we all know that the coding sequences in a particular DNA will be transcribed after which it, the coding sequence will translate into protein. The non-coding does not actually code for a protein. So the TRIMBL database is a translation of all coding sequences in a primary nucleic acid database. So it's basically a pool of all the translated uh, protein sequence uh, coding regions. So whatever coding region is there, that has been translated into a particular protein. So we are not very sure okay, about this. Like maybe it's not experimentally done. It is just done theoretically. Okay. So the entries that are less extensively annotated, meaning you don't have very much information about that protein, you don't have all details, then those are basically kept in the TMBL. Later, once you get all the information about it, you can move it to the Swiss database, where then it is finally curated and it is available freely for everyone. Moving on to the next, that is the secondary database. So as you all know, secondary databases take information from the primary databases and they study it, annotate it and give more information, basically collection of all primary databases. So some examples are ProSite, Print, Uniprot, which is again an important database tool, which is formed by the combination of Swissprot, TreeMBL, PIR. Next one is PFAM and Blocks, which are basically uh, databases that have information about the aligned sequence protein, motifs, and patterns. It also gives information about the classification of the protein, that is in which family it belongs, and what are the functions of the protein. Then you have another secondary database called as DALI which is a protein structure classification and the threading analysis, which actually gives you an idea about the evolutionary relationships of proteins. So what are threading analysis? We have to understand in the further videos. So stay tuned for the entire series. Then we have something called as a specialized databases, which I told you focuses on a particular organism or maybe a particular aspect, a particular area. Specialized databases are curated by experts in the field. Some examples of the specialized databases are Flybase, which is a database for Drosophila. So Drosophila is model organism used for many diseases and many genetic studies. So all the information related to the Drosophila, the mutants, you will find under Flybase. Wormbase, ACDB, TAIR. ACDB is very famous for T. elegans, which is again a model organism. Okay. Now, all of these specialized databases are run by certain unique organisms, uh, organizations, and they are carefully annotated. And you will find more information about these specific things as compared to that you would find in a primary or a secondary database. Because obviously, this is maintained by the experts in that area. So they actually know a lot about this. This TAIR database is actually for the model organism Arabidopsis thaliana. Okay, so again, another model organism for which this is available. So, similarly, there are many others that are not listed. In the further slide, you will see that there is a plethora of specialized databases that are available. Okay, these contain original data that are derived from functional analysis. Okay. Now, examples would be in the GenBank ESP database and microarray gene expression database at the EMBI, you have certain gene expression databases that are available. So again, this is another example of specialized database. Here is a brief summary of all the databases. It's not only the specialized, you have all the kinds like DDBG, which is a primary database. EMBL is a primary database. You have Flybase, which is a specialized database, ASDB, which is a specialized database, TAIR, this is a primary database, etc. So just have a look at this database chart. Then one specialized database which is important and frequently asked is the OMIM. OMIM stands for Online Mendelian Inheritance of Man. 
this database contains all the information about the human gene and the genetic disorders associated by the gene it is maintained by the ncbi and you have summary of all the genes phenotypes mutation and links to other databases which give you more information on this then you have certain commercial databases i have given the two main examples that is the insight and the unig insight contains the dna sequences transcripts expression data annotations to cd dna specially maintained by a particular company and is not freely available you have to pay to get a subscription to this then you have unig which is known for genomic research okay so if you are uh, if a scientist is particularly interested in a particular database on a particular study they can move to this commercial database and get their results finally the last type of database is a literature database now as the name itself suggests it's a literature database so you will have everything from the abstracts to the full text to the articles to the references everything in this particular database the first database literature database developed was medline no more medline is available now medline has been integrated into the ncbi and is refurbished as the pubmed database okay then another type of database apart from the pubmed is the web of science now web of science is obviously a commercial one meaning you need to have an institutional subscription to access it it is not freely accessible the third one is the biomed net again this is a very helpful kind of software because you can you know download all the data from the biomed in the form of a pdb format so it is easier for you to store and record later on so that's all for the literature databases in the next part we will be doing something called as the data retrieval after data retrieval we will move on to a very important and very interesting topic that is alignment we will see how to align nucleic acid sequences and protein sequences hopefully these series are helping you stay tuned to my channel for more on dbt i will be uploading some numerical type questions as requested and also coming up with some industrial based topics as well after my bioinformatics